Squash is a racket sport played by two or four players in a four-walled court with a small, hollow rubber ball. The players must alternate in striking the ball with their racket and hit the ball onto the playable surfaces of the four walls of the court. The game was formerly called squash rackets, a reference to the squashable softball used in the game. Squash is recognized by the IOC and supporters are lobbying for its incorporation in a future Olympic program. History The use of stringed rackets is shared with tennis which dates from the late 16th century, though is more directly descended from the game of rackets from England. In rackets, instead of hitting over a net as in sports such as tennis, players hit a squeezable ball against walls. Squash was invented in Harrow School out of the older game rackets around 1830 before the game spread to other schools, eventually becoming an international sport. The first courts built at this school were rather dangerous because they were near water pipes, buttresses, chimneys, and ledges. The school soon built four outside courts. Natural rubber was the material of choice for the ball. Students modified their rackets to have a smaller reach to play in these cramped conditions. The rackets have changed in a similar way to those used in tennis. Squash rackets used to be made out of laminated timber. In the 1980s, construction shifted to lighter materials with small additions of components like Kevlar, boron and titanium. Natural gut strings were also replaced with synthetic strings. In the 19th century the game increased in popularity with various schools, clubs and even private citizens building squash courts, but with no set dimensions. The first squash court in North America appeared at St. Paul's School in Concord, New Hampshire in 1884. In 1904 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, the earliest national association of squash in the world was formed as the United States Squash Rackets Association, now known as U.S. Squash. In April 1907 the Tennis, Rackets and Fives Association set up a subcommittee to set standards for squash. Then the sport soon formed, combining the three sports together called squash. In 1912, the RMS Titanic had a squash court in first class. It was not until 1923 that the Royal Automobile Club hosted a meeting to further discuss the rules and regulations and another five years elapsed before the Squash Rackets Association was formed to set standards for squash in Great Britain. Playing equipment. Standard rackets are governed by the rules of the game. Traditionally they were made of laminated wood, with a small strung area using natural gut strings. After a rule change in the mid-1980s, they are now almost always made of composite materials or metals with synthetic strings. Modern rackets have maximum dimensions of 686 mm long and 215 mm wide, with a maximum strung area of 500 square centimeters. The permitted maximum weight is 255 grams, but most have a weight between 90 and 150 grams. Squash balls are between 39.5 and 40.5 mm in diameter, and have a weight of 23 to 25 grams. They are made with two pieces of rubber compound, glued together to form a hollow sphere and buffed to a matte finish. Different balls are provided for varying temperature and atmospheric conditions and standards of play. More experienced players use slow balls that have less bounce than those used by less experienced players. Depending on its specific rubber composition, a squash ball has the property that it bounces more at higher temperatures. Squash balls must be hit dozens of times to warm them up at the beginning of a session. Cold squash balls have very little bounce. Small colored dots on the ball indicate its dynamic level, and thus the standard of play for which it is suited. The recognized speed colors indicating the degree of dynamism are. Some ball manufacturers such as Dunlop use a different method of grading balls based on experience. They still have the equivalent dot rating, but are named to help choose a ball that is appropriate for one's skill level. 
The four different ball types are intro, progress, competition and pro. The double yellow dot ball, introduced in 2000, is the competition standard, replacing the earlier yellow dot ball. There is also an orange dot ball. Players wear comfortable sports clothing. In competition, men usually wear shorts and a t-shirt, tank top or a polo shirt. Women normally wear a skirt or skirt and a t-shirt or a tank top or a sports dress. The National Institute of Health recommends wearing goggles with polycarbonate lenses. Many squash venues mandate the use of eye protection and some association rules require that all juniors and doubles players must wear eye protection. The court, the squash court, is a playing surface surrounded by four walls. The court surface contains a front line separating the front and back of the court and a half court line, separating the left and right hand sides of the back portion of the court, creating three boxes. The front half, the back left quarter and the back right quarter. Both the back two boxes contain smaller service boxes. The floor markings on a squash court are only relevant during serves. There are four walls to a squash court. The front wall, on which three parallel lines are marked, has the largest playing surface, whilst the back wall, which typically contains the entrance to the court, has the smallest. The outline runs along the top of the front wall, descending along the side walls to the back wall. There are no other markings on the side or back walls. Shots struck above or touching the outline, on any wall, are out. The bottom line of the front wall marks the top of the tin, a half-meter-high metal area which if struck means that the ball is out. In this way the tin can be seen as analogous to the net in other racket sports such as tennis. The middle line of the front wall is the service line and is only relevant during serves. Gameplay Service the players spin a racket to decide who serves first. This player starts the first rally by electing to serve from either the left or right service box. For a legal serve, one of the server's feet must be touching the service box, not touching any part of the service box lines. As the player strikes the ball, after being struck by the racket, the ball must strike the front wall above the service line and below the outline and land in the opposite back quarter court. The receiving player can choose to volley a serve after it has hit the front wall. If the server wins the point, the two players switch sides for the following point. Play after the serve, the players take turns hitting the ball against the front wall, above the tin and below the outline. The ball may strike the side or back walls at any time, as long as it hits below the outline. It must not hit the floor after hitting the racket and before hitting the front wall. A ball landing on either the outline or the line along the top of the tin is considered to be out. After the ball hits the front wall, it is allowed to bounce once on the floor before a player must return it. Players may move anywhere around the court but accidental or deliberate obstruction of the other player's movements is forbidden. Players typically return to the center of the court after making a shot. Scoring systems Squash scoring systems have evolved over time. The original scoring system is known as English scoring, also called handout scoring. Under this system, if the server wins a rally, they receive a point, while if the returner wins rally, only the service changes and no point is given. The first player to reach 9 points wins the game. However, if the score reaches 8 to 8, the player who was first to reach 8 decides whether the game will be played to 9, as before, or to 10. At one time this scoring system was preferred in Britain, and also among countries with traditional British ties, such as Australia, Canada, Pakistan, South Africa, India and Sri Lanka. The current official scoring system for all levels of professional and amateur squash is called pointer rally scoring. In pars, the winner of a rally always receives a point, regardless of whether they were the server or returner. Games are played to 11, but in contrast to English scoring, players must win by two clear points. That is, if the score reaches 10 to 10, play continues until one player wins by two points.
Pars to 11 is now used on the men's professional tour, and the tin height has been lowered by 2 inches for the women's professional tournaments. The women's professional tour uses the original tin height, but started using the Pars to 11 scoring system as of July 2008. Another scoring system is American scoring. The rules of American scoring are identical to PARS, apart from games are played to 15. This system is not widely used because games were considered to last too long and the winner would usually be the fitter player, not necessarily the better player. Competition matches are usually played to best of five types of shots played in squash. There are many types of shots played that lead to interesting games and strategy. Straight drive. The ball is hit parallel and close to a side wall to travel deep to the back of the court, often referred to as a good length shot. Boast. The ball is played off a side wall at an angle, or the back wall, before hitting the front wall. Volley. The ball is hit on the full, usually directly to the front wall. Drop shot. The ball is hit gently against the front wall, to fall softly to the floor in the front corner. Lob. The ball is hit softly and high on the front wall and with a high arc, so that it falls in a back corner of the court. Cross court. The ball is hit to the front wall from the right side to the left. Kill. The ball is hit hard and low on the front wall so that it travels no farther than half court. Trickle boast. A short boast where the ball is hit to the side wall at the front of the court. Squeeze boast. A more difficult shot which is hit from the front of the court when the ball is very close to the side wall. Has the same effect as the trickle boast but is more deceptive because of its difficulty. Nick. The ball is volleyed or hit off a bounce to strike the front wall then the junction of the side wall and floor giving the ball little or no bounce. Rolling Nick. When the nick shot is hit extremely well, the ball will roll along the floor. The remi, where the ball bounces into or off the roof light fittings, also known as an inadvertent foul shot. Back wall boast. The ball is hit moderately hard and high off the back wall, so that it goes the length of the room and hits off the front wall. Philadelphia. A shot played diagonally upwards into the front corner, hitting the front wall first and then the side wall. The ball then lobs over the court with significant spin. Ideally it hits the opposite side wall at the back and travels parallel to the rear wall making a return very difficult. This shot is a favorite in exhibition squash but is susceptible to being volleyed. Skid boast. A shot played from the back corners of the court where the wall is hit high along the side wall with a small angle so that it hits the side wall first then hits high in the middle of the front wall continuing to cross the court while high in the air ideally hitting the opposite side wall and landing close to the back wall to go past the opponent. As with the Philadelphia it is susceptible to being volleyed. Mizuki. This shot is hit as a volley. Unlike a normal volley, the Mizuki shot is hit with the other side of the racket by turning the wrist which deceives the direction of the ball. Reverse angle. A boast where the opposite side wall is hit first. Strategy and tactics. A key strategy in squash is known as dominating the tee. Skilled players will return a shot and then move back toward the tee before playing the next shot. From this position, the player can quickly access any part of the court to retrieve the opponent's next shot with a minimum of movement. A common strategy is to hit the ball straight up the side walls to the back corners. This is the basic squash shot, referred to as a rail, straight drive, wall, or length. After hitting this shot, the player will then move to the center of the court near the T to be well placed to retrieve the opponent's return. Attacking with soft or short shots to the front corners causes the opponent to cover more of the court and may result in an outright winner. Boasts or angle shots have deliberately struck off one of the side walls before the ball reaches the front. They are used for deception and again to cause the opponent to cover more of the court. 
Rallies between experienced players may involve 30 or more shots and therefore a very high premium is placed on fitness, both aerobic and anaerobic. As players become more skilled and, in particular, better able to retrieve shots, points often become a war of attrition. At higher levels of the game, the fitter player has a major advantage. Ability to change the direction of ball at the last instant is also important to unbalance the opponent. Expert players can anticipate the opponent's shot a few tenths of a second before the average player, giving them a chance to react sooner. Depending on the style of play, it is common to refer to squash players as power players. Powerful shots to take time away from their opponent. For example, John White, Omar Mossad, shot makers. Accurate shots to take time away from their opponent. For example, Jonathan Power, Rami Ashour, Amra Shabana, James Willstrip, Retrievers. Excellent retrieval to counter power and accuracy and to return shots more quickly to take time away from their opponent. For example, Peter Nichol, Gregory Gauthier, Attritional Players. A consistently high-paced game both from shot speed and running speed to wear their opponent down over time. For example, David Palmer, Nick Matthew, Jahangir Khan. Interference and obstruction Interference and obstruction are an inevitable aspect of this sport. Since two players are confined within a shared space, generally, the rules entitle players to a direct straight-line access to the ball, room for a reasonable swing and an unobstructed shot to any part of the front wall. When interference occurs, a player may appeal for a let, and the referee then interprets the extent of the interference. The referee may elect to allow a let and the players then replay the point, or award a stroke to the appealing player depending on the degree of interference. Whether the interfering player made an adequate effort to avoid interfering, and whether the player interfered with was likely to have hit a winning shot had the interference not occurred. An exception to all of this occurs when the interfering player is directly in the path of the other player's swing, effectively preventing the swing, in which case a stroke is always awarded. When it is deemed that there has been little or no interference, or that it is impossible to say one way or the other, the rules provide that no let is to be allowed, in the interests of continuity of play and the discouraging of spurious appeals for lets. Because of the subjectivity in interpreting the nature and magnitude of interference, the awarding of lets and strokes is often controversial. When a player's shot hits their opponent prior to hitting the front wall, interference has occurred. If the ball was traveling towards the side wall when it hit the opponent, or if it had already hit the side wall and was traveling directly to the front wall, it is usually a let. However, it is a stroke to the player who hit the ball if the ball was traveling straight to the front wall when the ball hit the opponent, without having first hit the side wall. Generally after a player has been hit by the ball, both players stand still. If the struck player is standing directly in front of the player who hit the ball he loses the stroke. If he is not straight in front, a let is played. If it is deemed that the player who is striking the ball is deliberately trying to hit his opponent, he will lose the stroke. An exception to all of this occurs when the player hitting the ball has turned, i.e., let the ball pass him on one side, but then hit it on the other side as it came off the back wall. In these cases, the stroke goes to the player who was hit by the ball. Referee The referee is usually a certified position issued by the club or assigned squash league. The referee has dominant power over the squash players. Any conflict or interference is dealt with by the referee. The referee may also issue to take away points or games due to improper etiquette regarding conduct or rules. Refer to interference and obstruction for more detail. In addition the referee is usually responsible for the scoring of games. Nowadays, three referees are usually used in professional tournaments. The central referee has responsibility to call the score and make decisions with the two side referees.